I have a video here of the electric field and how it changes in space and time for the plane wave we just looked at. And since the electric field is oriented in the x direction, we can call it the ex component. And so here's the z direction. It's propagating in the z direction. And so we'll see here. This is the wave propagating. So it's, it's planar in the wave front is planar is uh, very sinusoidally in space and then you can see that also in in time. Now earlier when we plotted voltages and currents along a, a transmission line uh, we only plotted amplitudes. Electric and magnetic fields however are vectors meaning they also have a direction associated with them. So you'll see that vector sign over them. So when we plot electric or magnetic fields we should also label or indicate the orientation or the component that we're plotting. So that's why I called this EX. In this case, we plotted the X component of the electric field. Um, let's see. Okay. We're already starting to make an analogy between what you learned in transmission lines and what we're going to be covering here in, with electromagnetic plane waves. And actually, we can borrow a lot of your knowledge from transmission lines to help us understand EM wave propagation. For example, Ampere's laws, uh, law and Faraday's law are two coupled differential equations. And we have E and H unknowns. And so in this case, um, we can, our, our, we're going to be able to create a wave equation just like for transmission lines, we combine the telegrapher's equations to get wave equations for the voltage and the current. Here, we can combine Ampere's and Faraday's laws, and we can create wave equations for either the electric field or the magnetic field. And then we can come up with solutions for the wave equations. Here, the solutions will be E and H fields, and whereas before they were voltages and currents. Now, notice we have directions. So the subscript here means it's oriented in the x direction. Here it means it's propagating in the positive direction. Here for this is for a positive z direction or negative z direction. And here are our solutions, our general solution, the total voltage on the transmission line, positive and negative traveling waves. We can also have tr positive and negative traveling plane waves that have varying E and H fields. All right, let's see what else. We can also compare here. This is the transmission lines, describes the transmission lines ability to store energy in the magnetic field. And this will describe the materials ability to store energy in um, magnetically. And so C capacitance, we can also relate to permittivity. And because we can make these comparisons with materials, when we have U sub P, the phase velocity, it was 1 over square root of LC. Here we're going to have 1 over square root of mu epsilon. And finally, we can relate the voltage and the current amplitudes using Z naught, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. And now we're going to be able to relate the electric and magnetic field amplitudes using eta the characteristic impedance of the material. All right, there are a few more things listed in the notes corresponding to this lecture, but um, those are the main things that I wanted to cover. So now let's start considering what our measurement setup might be. We don't want it to take up a lot of space, ideally. That is, it would be nice if the measurement setup didn't take up significantly more space than the size of an airplane. And since the EMP incident on the airplane looks like a plane wave, we need to somehow set up our measurement test to simulate a plane wave incident on the airplane and over the fre our frequency range of interest. So question, what might be a good way to locally implement a plane wave in our measurement setup? Can you use your knowledge from transmission lines, perhaps, to design a solution?